What's up YouTube and welcome to another exciting personal finance video where I'm talking today about gold and silver, uh, the bank earnings that just came out last week, uh, the Fed statement, all that good stuff. Uh, if you're new to this channel, like this video, please subscribe to my channel and uh, check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom, um, where I throw up all kinds of articles talking about uh, personal finance, uh, building wealth. Um, I talk about real estate and investing in the stock market and precious metals, all that good stuff. Okay, guys, uh, next, I just want to throw out my disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, this is all purely for entertainment purposes only. Um, do your own research before you buy any gold or silver or invest in the stock market or real estate or whatever. Um, I just tell you some things that I've done uh, and some things that I've seen in my time investing. Um, but um, do your own research before you invest in anything. Okay, guys. Let's get into this. Um, first off, I'll just back this up so you guys maybe give you guys a bit of a better view. Um, yeah, so what I saw the other day was, um, um, okay, of course, the big news this week was uh, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell came out Thursday, said that um, the Fed will be supportive of um, uh, like higher than normal inflation. So the Fed target is 2%. Um, if inflation runs a little bit higher than 2%, um, they're okay with that because the past few years we've had less than 2% inflation. So I'm not really sure what all that means other than that they're not going to aggressively fight inflation. If it gets above 2%, they're not going to be raising interest rates like crazy to try to bring it back down. Um as, as that was sort of what happened in 2018, they tried to kind of raise interest rates a little bit, crash the market. Um, so that is the word from the Fed. Um, well, what does that mean for your portfolio in that? It means probably stocks are going to do fairly well. Um, precious metals should do okay. Um, I don't think they're really going to go gangbuster, though. It's not like we're going to get hyperinflation. Um, but, uh, precious metals should kind of hold their own over the next few years. I mean, we'll see what happens. Of course, of course, the big animal in the room is deflation. And that's exactly what the Fed does not want. They don't want prices to collapse because if that happens, it's going to cause a lot of, a lot of people are going to feel the pain. Um, I just think about these huge pension funds, you know, what's going to happen if the stock market drops 60% or 50% or, you know, 75, 80%. I mean, they're going to be decimated. How are they going to be able to pay out benefits to people um, when all their investments just imploded? Not only that, bonds. Bonds are like a, a, a like a staple of, of pension fund uh, annuities and stuff like that. Um, what's going to happen to like the insurers and, and as well as these big pension funds? You know, bonds are yielding next to nothing. Um, so I just think that, you know, if prices like sink, um, you know, they're going to have some losses on their hands. Um, I, I, I guess the thing that everybody is, is struggling with now is where where do you invest now? I mean, the stock market seems to be in the biggest bubble ever. Um, the real estate, real estate market, like... Uh, I, like, all all across the world, real estate is 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 at all time highs. Um, currencies are being devalued and debased. Uh, the bond market is in the biggest bubble ever. Um, so really, like, where do you invest? And now precious metals are starting to hit, or at least gold starting to hit highs not seen since twenty eleven. Um, so it's up fifty percent from the bottom, about just about. Um, so. I don't know. I, my, I myself personally have been buying some gold and silver, as you guys have seen on this channel. But in the back of my mind, I'm kind of wondering, am I buying this high? Because um, it's not like I'm buying it at a thousand bucks an ounce. I'm buying it at two thousand dollars an ounce. And, you know, could it go to four thousand? Maybe. I don't know. I don't think really anybody knows. We're kind of in uncharted waters. Um, that's why my approach has been to just kind of stay diversified among asset classes, which means I'm buying some stocks and buying, actually I don't really own bonds, uh, but I do have a little bit of cash, um, to take advantage of any market meltdowns or anything like that. You know, of course, everybody has exposure to real estate. If you own your own home, you're in the real estate business. Um, 
And, uh, and like I said, like with these videos, I've been buying some precious metals because it's not always clear how, how these things are going to end. You know, life's always going to go on. We're always going to live and make it through this stuff, but, um, it might be a fundamentally changed investment, uh, environment, um, so that's just a little bit of food for thought, guys. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is um, bank earnings. Yes, I love my banks. I love those dividends. But uh, I've noticed um, all the money that central banks and governments have been pumping out and printing. Um, uh, they've done very well. Um, they've sort of held the line. The economy is basically kind of just barely floating right now. Um, and banks themselves have said uh, that so far so good, all the free money handed out has prevented just a huge wave of defaults and bad loans. But now that money is coming to an end. So basically all that money has just delayed the inevitable. Um, there's going to be a lot of people who can't afford their home and, and they're going to be defaulting on those mortgages and banks are going to have to take it on the chin with loan losses. There's going to be many companies that have been thrown a lifeline that can't repay that loan or that line of credit that are going to have to close their doors. Maybe they get a mortgage on a commercial property or something like that. Um, and just this morning, it's it, this isn't just a U.S. thing, a Canadian thing, a European, England, Australia. You know, everybody's in the same boat. We're all hurting. The, the global debt balloon has never been bigger. Um, it's just, uh, it's crazy. Uh, the amount of debt that's out there and um, all these loans can't go bad. I think central bankers, I think they all realize that. So um, anyway, that's something to kind of keep in mind. <clears throat> so uh, the, just this morning, uh, I was on uh, Yahoo Finance and I was reading an article about China, Chinese banks. Um, they have a boatload of bad loans. Um, they're not sure, if, you know, what's going to happen. One bank, I forget which bank it was. China's four largest lenders have set aside an astronomical amount for bad loan provisions. One bank in particular, I think, set aside 97% of its earnings or something like that for bad loans. I mean, uh, we all kind of knew this is coming. There's no there's no country that's like super strong. Everybody is mired in debt. Um, everybody overspent. There's been a real estate boom raging in China for 10, 20 years now. Uh, same with Australia, same with Canada, same with some areas of the U.S., um, same with uh, over in Europe and, uh, and and over in England and stuff like that, over in Great Britain. All 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 of these real estate, um, real estate globally is just oh massively massively overvalued, uh, and that's all a function of cheap easy credit and at record low interest rates. And it's not just a North American, European, it's, it's worldwide. So when all of this fake money, fake equity, you know, oh, housing prices, I'm always reading, oh, housing prices are, have held up well during the, during this, uh, economic crisis. Um, it's going to, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're up 10, 15% from last year. Because uh, supposedly everybody's there's a giant exodus from the cities into the suburbs, and that's pushing up home values in the suburbs, right? Because it makes if you got to stay at home, I mean nobody wants a 300, 400 square foot condo, right? Of course you want a big house, and backyard. You need some living space. Um, you know you might need a little exercise room if the gym's closed, whatever. Um, but to me this. I, I, I don't know. I just got kind of a bad feeling about all of this. Um, as, as the bank CEOs were saying, uh, the Canadian banks report this past week, um, earnings weren't that bad. Um, but if you, if you kind of uh, dig a little bit beyond the headline, you'll see that basically all their earnings were made up from, from uh, stock, buy, buying and selling uh, stocks and bonds and stuff like that. It was all the capital market stuff that was pushing up the earnings. Their real underlying core businesses, i.e. personal banking and writing loans, that is down. Some of them were down 18%. Some of them were down 30%. Um, that's a problem. That's a giant problem. So uh, I think those... 
those kind of numbers are going to come home to roost, right? Because after all, the stock market's at an all-time high. It recovered from the March low. Um, where's it going to go from here? And if the markets do collapse, and these, these uh, you know, uh, ca capital markets traders at, at the banks, if they're on the wrong side of the trade, um, those impressive numbers are going to be like record losses. So I'm just being cautious. I lightened up on some of my banks this week. Um, I, I traded uh, a gold stock, uh, Newmont Mining, kind of jumped in when it was down on, I don't know, Wednesday or Thursday, I can't remember, and then sold it again on Friday. Now it's back down again. So I don't know, I'm just trying to be smart. It's really hard to, in this in this market, I'm, I'm having a hard time. I've, I'm still holding a lot of stocks, but anything I buy, I'm so skeptical about. I'm just like, I'm not, I'm just not sure. I got a kind of a bad feeling about this. Um, I just don't want it to blow up in my face, um, as I'm sure many of you guys do. So there is a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I've, I've, I've paused, as, as I said in my last video, I, I, I've been buying a lot of gold and silver this year. These beautiful maple leaves, 2020 Canadian maples. Um, I've, I've, I haven't bought any more uh, on the big sell-off with gold this week. I'm just kind of waiting. I'm going to do the wait-and-see approach. Um, I would like to pick up a little bit more. Um, my goal is uh, if I could get 10 ounces, uh, 10 ounces of gold, yeah. I'd be happy with that. Nothing wrong with that. I'm kind of tied you over just in case, just as a little insurance policy. I don't know where this stuff is going to go. All I do know is that it's important to be as diversified as can be because almost everything is overvalued. And, you know, never, never before, well, I don't want to say never, I'm sure there's been times in history where we've had, you know, an economic crisis, a stock market crash, a debt, um, a debt crisis that morphs into kind of a sovereign debt crisis and currency crisis. I mean, these are big, big, big forces at work here. You know, the stock market is about 10% or something like that of the bond market. You know, uh, it's 10% of the size of the bond market. So if the global bond market goes, we are going to feel a, a world of hurt like never before. Um, it'll take everything with it. Real estate, uh, like, like everything, man. So... Anyway, um, that's what I'm doing. That's my approach. I'm just trying to trying to be smart, trying to play it smart. Um, stay a little bit diversified. Uh, this week here, I'll be doing my net worth numbers and my passive income. What I've been doing with some of that passive income is I've been buying, I've been taking passive income from my dividend stocks, and I've been buying real things like gold and silver. Um, so I'll see uh, I'll see how that works out. And, uh, and who knows, maybe I'll pick up another Buffalo. I really like the Buffaloes, but there's that they, they do sell at a, at a fairly, fairly big premium to the Maples. So an ounce of gold is an ounce of gold people. But, uh, anyway, so those are my thoughts for this week. Um, hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe to this channel, like the video and check out my website, my road to wealth and freedom for uh, some of my upcoming reports about net worth, um, passive income, and just my thoughts on investing in general. That's it, guys. Thanks so much.